in recitation or recitation serial. It is very important to be able to debug your code, especially for the part twos of this course. The debugging process normally would take the most of the time of your part two's code development. And you should be aware of what kind of tools that are available to you to debug your code and which part of your code that might cause the bug, which is the reason that your code or your model does not work really well. So for the part one of this recitation, we are going to talk about tools or ways that make your code be able to run. And in the next part, we are going to look for some ways to monitor the training process of your model to make sure it runs as what you expect it to do. Three ways to debug will be discussed here. That is print debugging, logging, and PDB. First, the print debugging. This is the most intuitive way to debug your code. You can simply add a print statement and print out the thing you want to know about your code in those lines. Here's a very simple example where you simply generate a random NumPy array. And then you transform it from NumPy array to PyTorch tensor and just print out their shape, their type, and the data type it contains. Let's run the code. You can see the shape of the NumPy array is transformed from NumPy ND array to PyTorch tensor. And the data it contains is float 64 or torch float 64. It is very common to make sure that the data type it contains, that is data type here. The data type it contains is float instead of integer, which may cause great bug in your code. Here's another simple example. You generated a NumPy vector with random length and then use another NumPy vector to accumulate values in the generated vector. We printed out each iteration to know the code is working as what we expect it to do. You can see that in each iteration, the values are accumulated For most of the cases, when your code base is not that huge, the print could work well. However, when your code base is huge, and for example, there are multiple .py files, just like what you might see in the GitHub for most of the projects, you may find that keep using print statements is a bit messy because you need to delay lines or comment it out every time when you want to make a change for the printed out thing. But by using logging, you can group those printed out statements into different severity levels and just print out the and just print out those needed. Also, when the running time of your code is very long, which is a common case for part two of this course, you may want to store those printed out stuff in a file instead of check the terminal as it some in some cases when you are using some detached terminal to make sure your code runs until it ends that terminal might be turned off automatically and all the things you print out might be lost here the same example as would be used for the first section where only the print statements are replaced by logging warning statements. We just set up the logins here. If you want to change the severity levels of the thing printed out, you can change it here, or you can add some inputs here for the file name and to store those printed out things in a file. You can see the running of the codes here. There's another article written by previous TA of this course. It's posted here. If you are interested for the logging in more detail, you can check it here. 
one note on using logging for this course is that if you are simply using remote Jupyter notebooks for your part two, the logging is not recommended as the logging may not be compatible or work well with the Jupyter notebooks. You can simply use the print. Finally, the PDB. PDB is a very handful interactive way to debug your code. And it will be very similar for the tools you use to debug your code in C languages if your previous courses uses. I have a very similar example here to show how to use it. We just add PDB set trace here in, a, in the for loop, which, calcul, which accumulate the value in the randomly generated random length vector. However, in this time, the PDB set trace will be a stop point. And right after the PDB set trace is executed, the code is stopped and it will waiting for your commands. Here at this moment, the sum is still be zero and the result is still the all zero vector. You can type, you can check it by tap the name of the variable. Just like what you do with the C language debugger. You can enter N, which is the short for next command to run one more line. At this time, the sum will have some values here. And the result is still be all zero vector, as you can see here. If you don't want to execute your code line by line, you can use C or continue. That will make your code run until the next PDB set trace which is the next stop point of your code. You can see here, you can print out the i. At this moment, it should be one. And both sum and result have some values after the first iteration. For more commands that you can use with PDB, you can check it by typing help. You can see the command lists. You can see there are a lot of things like exit, return, or quit that you might have been used with your C language debuggers. And if you want to know what the command used for, you can tap help plus that command like next or help in. To know. So that's basically all for this part of this presentation.